Hey, hello everyone, Fox here, and it's bounty review time again. So for September, we're going to be reviewing the Go Bag Pack and the Anniversary Pack. The Go Bag Pack's actually an old pack that has returned to us with retuned weapons and some new items. And one thing to make note of, if you did any of the Go Bag bounties previously when it originally was launched, your progress has been reset on all of them. And whenever a bounty is added into the game, one of them gets rotated out. So we're going to be reviewing the anniversary pack because it is going to be rotated out in October. So remember, I'm only going to be reviewing the good weapons, so no cosmetics and no weapons that are basically just reskins. They got to have something decent going for them. And overall, the uh, the item quality for these two packs are kind of meh. There are some okay-ish weapons in there, but they're mainly going to be good for new players who haven't really acquired any of your kind of mid-game-ish weapons, but there are a few pretty good ones in there. Anyways, let's get started with the Go Bag first. So first up, we've got the Bug Out Bag. It's one of the new items added to the returning Go Bag Bounty Pack, and the bounty to get it is to kill 10 Plague Zombies with vehicles, so it's really easy to get. If you want to get more Bug Out Bags, then they're going to cost 390 influence each, and what it is is a reskin to the Hiking Backpack, which means it is an 8-slot backpack that weighs 8 pounds. That's nice because the typical 8-slot backpack, the more common version, weighs 12 pounds. And the thing that makes it different is that it's really, really small. So if you didn't like how bulky the hiking backpack was, well, then go for the bug out bag. As far as its strategic value goes, it is expensive, like 390 influence for an 8-slot bag. It's a bit pricey, but at the same time, you're kind of paying for the fact that it's just always there. You don't have to wonder, when when am I going to find me some, you know, hiking backpacks? So if you're in a situation where you've got influence to burn, but you don't have a lot of the really nice eight slot, eight pound backpacks, then this is a way to ensure that you can get some. And obviously, if you've got a ton of influence, sure, get the cosmetic upgrade if you don't like how bulky the hiking backpacks are. Next up, we've got the Tow Hitch Club. The bounty for this is to craft 10 tool kits, which are the repair kits for your car. And if you want more clubs, they're going to cost 750 influence each. And what this is, is a blunt weapon that has slightly above average stats, and it's also very well-rounded. It's one of those weapons that I'm like, eh, it's kind of like meh. I mean, it's, it's slightly better than meh. It's good, but it's like the very minimum of what you would consider good. And what really holds it back is the ease of use isn't too good, so it eats up your stamina. And for having kind of a crummy ease of use, or not crummy, just having kind of an average ease of use, it also has a pretty average durability, which it's still good, but it's just not as good as you would expect for a blunt weapon. So it's it's good, but it's it's not great. And that's the easiest way to describe the Toe Hitch Club. So if you don't have a decent blunt weapon, hey, it's there as a guaranteed way to get one. But I definitely recommend getting the Bilge Rat Shovel in the previous bounty before it rotates out. Next up, we've got the Trailblazer X2K. And the bounty for it is to kill three play guards in melee combat. If this worries you, just remember that you just need to get the killing blow in melee combat. So you can do like 99% of its health with a gun and then just tap it with a melee weapon and that'll count. If you want more Trailblazers, they're going to cost 500 influence each. And what it is, is a 9mm kind of carbine semi-automatic style rifle. Now, it's pretty good, honestly. And that's because, one, it's got the really cheap 9mm bullets. That's really good because most of the zombies die in one headshot, so you might as well shoot the cheap bullets at them. It's got a generous 30-round magazine. It comes with a detachable handmade suppressor, which you'll probably just pull off and immediately sell, but it means you can put something better on it later on. And then it's got a really, really strong scope, which you would think is a really good thing. And, and it is kind of good, but the problem is that it has just like horrendous muzzle sway. When you zoom in with this weapon, it's pinpoint accurate and it zooms really far, but it, it's like you've been taking like a ton of shots of liquor because you're, you're just going to like sway all over the place and you have to really, really compensate with your own personal aim to deal with the massive muzzle sway. So it's kind of awkward because if you're going to use it with gunslinging, then you don't care about accuracy because gunslinging gives you basically aimbot. But gunslinging does have a limited range, and if you wanted to actually use the scope to its full extent, 
well, you're going to be wrestling with the crazy sway with the weapon. So I actually would have liked if its zoom wasn't as strong and it just didn't have as much muzzle sway. But either way, it's still a really good weapon and it only costs 500 influence. If you are brand new to State of Decay, so you don't really have any particularly good weapons, you definitely should at least do the bounty to unlock this because it's going to be a really good everyday weapon. Next up, we have the Doomsday Carbine. The bounty for it is to craft 1,500 bullets and or crossbow bolts, meaning it can be one or the other or a little bit of both. If you want more Doomsday Carbines, they're going to cost 1,200 each. And what it is is a 45 caliber semi-automatic rifle. It's got a pretty generous 50-round magazine. It does come with a detachable professional brake, which... You just leave it on for more power or swap it out for a nice silencer for more stealth. And overall, it's a pretty good weapon. It's actually kind of what I wanted the Trailblazer to be like because it has a less powerful scope. So it still has a scope, which is what you want, but it's not quite as much zoom, but it's got way less muzzle sway. So it's pretty much what I wanted the Trailblazer to be. Its only real weakness is that 45 caliber rounds are not an advantage over 9mm rounds. They cost more to produce, and they, they just they give you a little bit more power, but the power is so small, it's just really not that big of a deal. You could just take the Trailblazer and put a nice brake on it, and it will hit very close to maximum power stat. So I would still say the Doomsday Carbine is better, but remember, it's way, way more expensive if you want more of them. 1,200 influence as opposed to 500, but you may find that not having to wrestle with the crazy muzzle sway to be worth it. And last but certainly not least for the Go Bag Bounties is the Mad Norma Truck. This is actually another one of the new items added into the return of the Go Bag Pack. And the bounty for this is to use gasoline canisters eight times, meaning you just gotta refuel vehicles eight times. If you want more of these trucks, they're gonna cost 1,500 influence each. And the reason it made it on the list is because, well, you spend a lot of I mean, a lot of time is going to be spent inside of a vehicle. So finding the vehicle that is just, just right for you is definitely a worthy investment. You use vehicles for all kinds of things. Like you might just keep a van at the base for storage. You might have a super fast vehicle just for like going around to kill the infestations or running missions just to do it as quickly as possible. But one of the vehicles you're probably going to want is just kind of a balanced vehicle for looting that isn't slow. Because the thing about Mad Norma is that it's a supercharged version of the standard Norma truck. So it's got all the strengths of the Norma, but none of the disadvantages. So it's tough, it's decent on fuel, and it's got six slots for cargo. That's the strength of basically all the trucks. But the disadvantage of the Norma is that it was kind of on the sluggish side and it was a really clumsy vehicle. And that is definitely not the case with the Mad Norma. It's surprisingly quick and it's got really good handling. So it's fast enough that, yeah, you can get around the map pretty nicely. And it's got enough storage that you can like grab a bunch of stuff and shove it in. Sure, it doesn't have the storage of a van, but it's so much faster. And it's not as fast as like an insane sports car, but it's not slow. It's still very quick, very maneuverable. It absolutely could just be your go-to vehicle that you use for the rest of your time in State of Decay 2. And there you go. Those are the items that I thought were pretty good in the Go Bag Pack. Let's move right into the Anniversary Pack next. Remember that the Anniversary Pack is going to be removed from the Bounty Broker list when the next Bounty Pack comes in. You can expect that to happen sometime in early October. Now to get started, right off the coattails of the Mad Norma is Anniversary Pack's Trumbull 4x4, another truck. The Bounty for it is to kill... 25 freaks with vehicles, and if you want more of these trucks, they cost 1,000 influence each. And uh, to me, they're basically identical. Yes, they look different, the bounties are different, the influence costs are different, but in terms of their performance, they seem to be identical to me. So if you like the idea of the capabilities of the Mad Norma, but you're not a fan of how it looks, then maybe you'll like the Trumbull 4x4 better. Still got the same six slots cargo capacity, very quick, very maneuverable, decent fuel, doesn't get destroyed very easily. It's just a really good everyday vehicle. 
Moving right along, we've got the Industrial Wrench. The bounty for this weapon is to kill six Screamers with heavy weapons. And if you want more wrenches, they cost 500 influence each. And what this is, is an impact and knockdown styled heavy weapon. The heavy weapons, they tend to either be more of like a bladed or edge style where they've got super high lethality and super high dismemberment, or they tend to be a blunt style where they've got super high impact and they've got super high knockdown. And that's exactly what the industrial wrench is. In fact, I believe it has the highest stats for impact and knockdown of all the heavy weapons, though it's only it's just a hair better than the tank hammer. So if you like the look of the tank hammer better from the World War II pack, you could definitely go for that. Like the differences are extremely minimal. And what makes this weapon useful is that impact is very damaging against play guards. So you could use this to destroy play guards in melee combat. That's not a super great idea, but if you do grab one of these, you could use it to complete the Trailblaze X2K bounty to kill three play guards in melee combat. But the main thing is, if you are an enthusiast of heavy weapons, you're definitely going to want to add this to your collection, just because the stats on it for the blunt style are just so extreme. Its main weakness is that its ease of use is just absolutely awful. So when you swing this around, you're gonna be running out of stamina very quickly. But if you are skilled in the use of heavy weapons, then you're probably going to have ways to compensate for that, like stimulants or energy drinks and whatnot. But either way, if you like heavy weapons, you should definitely get your hands on an industrial wrench. Okay, it's time to move on to the final item. And yes, that does mean that I only chose three items as good from the anniversary pack, but this last item is quite good. It definitely makes up for the lack of quantity. It is the AKS-74U Valentine. The bounty is to kill two play guards with assault weapons, and if you want more of these weapons, they're going to cost 1,000 influence each. What it is, is a 5.56 millimeter assault rifle. It has semi-automatic and fully automatic as its fire selection modes. It's got a 45 round magazine and it does accept muzzle attachments. Overall, this has just about everything that you want in a superior quality everyday use weapon. It's got a scope. The scope isn't super strong, but it's very close to pinpoint accurate and it has hardly any muzzle sway at all. That's really the key there. So it's got this great scope for confirming kills at kind of a, ooh, I'd say close to early mid-range, but it's just, it's just got so little sway that if you have good accuracy, you will easily be able to use this at more distant ranges just because the weapon itself won't be getting in the way of your aiming. The only real disadvantage to this weapon is that the 5.56 millimeter rounds you know, they're, they're just more expensive. And like I said, if you've got a 9mm weapon, you can put a break on it and it will be plenty powerful if you do need to shoot something that is a little bit healthier to bring down, something that doesn't die from headshots, such as like a Plague Heart. But it's not as expensive as the 7.62mm rounds. And honestly, it's just such a high quality weapon that I think that you can look past that just because it's just really enjoyable to use. Just the lack of sway, the zoom, it's got plenty of ammunition in its magazine. It's way better than the Trailblazer and the Doomsday overall. It's really only held back by its ammo being more expensive. But like I said, it's just such a good weapon. It's a good weapon by any standard. Like I could easily see myself using this even like hundreds of days into Nightmare Zone. This would still be a really good weapon to use. So highly recommend picking up an AKS-74U if the next bounty, which is going to be the Wild Wild West bounty, has not come out. Even if you've only got one day left, just go out and kill two play guards with assault weapons and pick up at least one copy of the AKS-74U. It's just a fantastic weapon, unless you think like the paint job is ugly. But there you go. These are the items that I think are pretty good in the Go Bag and Anniversary pack down below. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Or do you think there's any weapons that I missed? Do you disagree with some of these? Do you think some of these aren't good enough to make it onto the list? You let me know down in the comment section. At any rate, like this video if it was informative. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.